Well, here we are at the top of the hour, 10 o'clock. We're pretty informal around here, I know, so I'll just get going. Uh, it is so nice to be back here at, the, <clears throat> at this science circle. I was saying it feels like a holiday, I actually. Had a hard time getting to sleep last night. Looking forward to this so much. Haven't been in the world uh, so much uh, interacting with Second Life, but I've been doing quite a bit outside of uh, the in-world space here, trying to bring in some people. We'll be talking about that a little bit later today. I do want to thank Chan and all of you here in the circle for always keeping the light alive for virtual world science and this learning space. So good to see some things do continue on and keep getting better and better. I'm going to start with a joke. It, it's a Russian one, and I think Russians tell the very best jokes. It's a dark humor grounded in truth. Uh, when I was working in Moscow, this is one of my favorite jokes. Uh, it's on the difference between an optimist, a pessimist, and a realist. And it goes, here's the difference. Uh, an optimist learns English, a pessimist learns Chinese, and a realist learns to use a machine gun. And that was 1990, right about the fall of the USSR. I was there covering it for a news bureau. And uh, it, it's still a darkly funny and true joke. And our topic today is hope. It's not blind optimism that everything is going to be okay, but it is a realism grounded in authentic possibility. And I think that's that's where hope truly lies. And, and yes, this is not a time for unwarranted optimism, foolishly ignoring the horrors of today, but it can also be equally foolish, I think, to lose sight of the greater possibilities right now, today, uh, and what's to come. Yes, hope does lie sometimes. Hopefully, li hope lies straight ahead of us uh, in the days to come. This is a brief interview uh, of our topic today, a little bit about me. Uh, you can uh, go ahead and get a PDF file at any point, if you like, if you see any of the slides uh, and the links that I'll be sharing are interesting to you. Go ahead, click the little I uh, on the screen here. It'll give you a link to the PDF slides. You can follow, follow along if you like. Uh, I'm going to be sharing uh, my take today uh, uh, from a sailor's uh, viewpoint. I've been a sea captain uh, for a decade uh, here on the Pacific and, and a chaplain on the side conducting weddings and memorials at sea. Uh, so many, so many things can go wrong at sea. Bad weather, bad gear, bad passengers, bad captains and and during a crisis on board we can lock our head into the boat and and we might get scared our passengers are for sure um, we lose reason and perspective and context uh, when we're afraid often we do uh, we go into survival mode and we attack others and we trust less and we can't always help it, but we can try to uh, understand it better. Uh, as a captain, you learn to keep your head in the boat uh, during a crisis, often several things going wrong at once. And you also keep your eyes on the horizon. Sailors who forget that last part can get walloped by something pretty quick. Uh, the horizon really isn't that far away. Uh, even just 10 miles ahead can hide some stuff behind the curve of the earth. So we often get so locked into our heads in turmoil that we just uh, ignore the view ahead. Why do we do that? Well, there's some pretty good reasons why we do that. We know why. It's called the brain's negative bias. And politicians and news media and manipulators use this so well, and it's so important for us to understand. Uh, let's say uh, that you get a good performance review at work, and they say four really good things about you, but there's one critical suggestion where you might improve. What is it we fixate on? It's the criticism uh, that rings through so loudly, and that's that's not necessarily a bad thing, and negativity bias has served us well uh, when our forebears were peeping out of a cave. They weren't searching for butterflies on a breeze, but they were searching for cracking twigs and shadows on the ground. There's monsters out there. So uh, it's good to have a negative bias. It served a survival purpose, but what is wrong is exploiting that 
uh, for nefarious ends. So we need to understand how this bias works uh, to con uh, counter it. And we have a formula uh, to counter our negative bias. Psychology Today uh, reports the magic ratio of five positives to counter one single negative. And that uh, same concept also applies to those nasty negative self-criticisms uh, we take way too much to heart. Uh, we need to present ourselves, I think, with more positives and self-compassions. And uh, here's a useful link, uh, article from the New York Times on how to do that. Uh, all these uh, hyperlinks are active in the PDF file if you do grab that. I think we also need to moderate uh, our own negativity bias. No one else will, uh, but they sure will exploit it. And uh, Perhaps there's also, uh, I fear, a positivity bias that if it's happening now, uh, it can't be all that bad that we walk through the storm with a smile uh, as our umbrella, the best is yet to come, you know. Uh, the old sayings. Maybe we shouldn't be feeling so optimistic uh, after all if it keeps us from fixing the uh, disasters at hand. Uh, 5.6 kilometers away, that is pretty damn close. You're right, sis. Thanks for doing the math. Uh, I kind of just hold my fingers out in front of me. Four fingers is uh, about uh, 10 degrees of arc and uh, it all it all adds up. Uh, I spent a number of years uh, before I became a sailor uh, working in uh, the news media, in TV and radio and newspapers. I was a, an anchor, uh, and I selected the day's uh, news stories as a news uh, director. And let's say that you are a producer of a newscast, and you're trying to decide the lead story for your 6 o'clock uh, newscast, which... Which one are you going to choose? Are you going to choose a late evening homicide that impacts just a single family? Or are you going to cover a new diet tip that may add years to everybody's life? Well, unfortunately, that uh, healthy tip may, may be a kicker at the end of a newscast if it runs at all. Uh, there is a saying uh, in news, you've heard it, that if it leads, uh, if it bleeds, it leads. Uh, and that homicide is unfortunately going to go up on top. And it hooks people uh, with a negative bias. And, and that's good uh, for ratings. Journalists, we zoom in on flames. And, and in Moscow, we would zoom on in on the protesters until it looks like the whole world is ablaze uh, and in uh, revolt. Uh, it's good for scaring people, and it's good for locking in their attention, and uh, it's profitable. Uh, one network executive say, said it may be bad for America, but it's great for advertising revenue. Oh, that wasn't too long ago. <laughs> Journalism, it profits uh, off of the bias, uh, as do politicians and tyrants and insurance agents. Uh, that's a cheap joke. I'm sorry. Uh, as as do many uh, of us, it's easier to scare people uh, than it is to inspire them. To scare them, all we need to do is say boo. Uh, to inspire people, uh, it, it can often take a lot of talk uh, or uh, some special kind of act. Uh, those of you uh, that may have attended some of my earlier Science Circle talks, I've done a number of them here. You know I'm uh, focused on finding our cultural commonalities uh, so we might better understand our differences. Uh, my research, my publications have been on transcultural themes and images that connect us. Uh, Cross-cultural gulfs, the most resonant images are children and animal, animals. Look at these combo twofer shot, shots. It's hard uh, not to smile at that, not to feel good about it. And that response is transcultural uh, wherever people are in the world. When they see images like this, we tend to smile and feel good about it. That's called transculturalism. Uh, one commonality uh, we share, I've been looking more and more trying to find commonalities uh, between us around the world, hopefully helping to bridge our differences. One commonality we share, uh, for the most part, uh, is that we are all good and caring and generous people. Uh, you don't always get that watching the news or interacting with uh, the well 
misplaced bad people in the world. Sometimes it seems like everybody, everybody is just out for themselves. Uh, but in a recent study, uh, and there's a link to that here, 200 participants in seven different nations uh, were given $10,000 each to spend however they wanted. And seven people in 10, that's 70%, uh, spent most of the money on people other than themselves, even uh, when it was kept secret and they got no glory from it. Uh, the mo money mostly went to their family and their friends and even strangers uh, and charity, uh, more than they gave to themselves. And, uh, and the 30% uh, of the greedy, selfish people uh, who put themselves above all else, even truth and the planet is itself, we know those kinds of people out there. Uh, they're the ones so often on display, aren't they? The ones that we see that we think the world is made up of these kinds of people in business, in politics, in media. But actually, they're just a minority that quite often what we do is we zoom in until once again the world looks like uh, it's a blaze. Uh, here's another uh, little factoid I found, uh, courtesy of Bard's uh, AI platform, actually. We were watching one of those uh, pirate movies where they collected a mermaid's tear of joy. And uh, they said, supposedly, uh, these are the most potent tears, according to Siller's tales, uh, the tears of joy. So it got us to wondering just how rare are uh, tears of joy authentic joy uh, and we guess to be very rare uh, given how depressed everyone seems uh, but Bard told us that uh, tears uh, of joy are more common than people might think uh, referred to a 2022 study uh, in the journal Frontiers in Psychology which I was able to easily locate and it says that 92% of the participants in the study had cried tears of joy uh, over the past year. 92%, 9 out of 10 uh, of us. And, uh, and uh, almost all of us uh, then know these moments of joy that bring tears to our eyes, authentic happiness. Uh, and most of us most likely uh, would like to have more of that. Uh, here's another commonality we all share, at, at least here in the United States, is just how sick we are of the current political climate. Uh, it may look like everyone is caught up in the news of the moment, and that's all we think about and talk about, but 65% of us are just really uh, exhausted by it. I'm a newsman, and I'm exhausted by it. And 55% uh, of us are often, are always angry about the political uh, turmoil going on right now. Only 10% of us find uh, this situation hopeful. Uh, uh, this is uh, Pew, uh, Pew Research based here in the United States, but I think publics uh, everywhere uh, may well be feeling the same uh, right now. Uh, here's some more data, uh, what we share in common around the world, according to a survey of 15,000 workers in 12 different countries. A few of us are really flourishing uh, in our work. 55% of us uh, are, are struggling with, with issues of self-worth and mental health and report feeling like, uh, like we're failures. Uh, more than 60% uh, percent of us. Uh, uh, are struggling with physical health due to poor sleep and poor exercise and poor eating habits caused by uh, the stress uh, of the time. Uh, here's an interesting uh, piece of data that we uh, also share. 83% of the workers said they'd be willing to work less, uh, earn less uh, to be help, uh, happier. They'd work as much, but they'd, they'd accept a lower rate of pay. Uh, if they could just be happier uh, in their work. Any teachers here, well, we call that a career in education, don't we? Uh, and, of course, uh, something else we share in common, a common malady uh, is the downhill 
uh, the downward slide in all of our environments. The United Nations says billions of people are endangered by the climate crisis, a toxic air pollution, diminishing food security, disease outbreaks, drought, floods, leading to toxic level levels of malnutrition, anxiety, and stress. Hard to be hopeful about that. But one thing we can do is try to feel a little little more empowered dealing with it uh, go ahead and check out uh, the link on this slide in the pdf uh, to the u.n climate action uh, link maybe you'll find some uh, positive outlets for our uh, our anxiety our anxious energy so where is the hopeful news if there is any we all share a common space in the disasters i think we all share a common space in hope here are two reports uh, you might want to check out the first uh, is bill weir's report on cnn covering how to unscrew a planet talking about our screwed planet well he offers some fixes here that's what the segment's called he has expert guests coming in and sharing hopeful results and carbon removal and so we're solar-powered travel and uh, climate intervention and, and just increasing a, a global awareness of what works. And my favorite example uh, was countering the, the hunting to near extinction of, of baleen whales and, and the missing whale waste that used to feed entire uh, ecosystems, uh, which are now starved ocean deserts. Uh, but there was this trial underway of artificial whale poo made from volcanic ash and rich in nu uh, nutrients. And, and they sprinkled this over a patch of sea. And with just four days, there was fresh uh, phytoplankton. And just five days after that, it was full of fish. And there is a YouTube uh, uh, video here linked. Uh, to that CNN report, Bill Weir, he is the uh, CNN chief climate correspondent. He does a really good uh, job. Uh, there's also a transcript if you prefer transcripts. I do. I just want to get. I just want to get to the data. Uh, it's about a 40-minute long video, but I guarantee it'll make you feel hopeful about the future. There's also more hopeful news on this slide. Uh, NPR has a, a recent report. Uh, since the, the use of electric vehicles and solar power uh, is catching on so rapidly that uh, we might still uh, yet meet uh, our climate change goals and we may even set some higher uh, goals. Oh, I wish I could follow the chat a little closer. That's where the, that's where the good stuff is. Uh, but I'm trying to keep my eyes on my notes or I get too lost where I'm talking about. Uh, there's also lots of hopeful, thi uh, hopeful things happening in health uh, and science. The New York Times has a recent report saying that it looks like we're in a golden age for medicine. We're on the cusp of an era of astonishing innovation to come, a limitless horizon uh, for CRISPR-powered therapies and uh, cures. That's been talked about on this very stage of CRISPR developments. There's also vaccines for uh, our most infectious disease coming. There's cancer treatments and weight loss. And experts say we can't even imagine what's going to be coming over the next uh, 30 years as we advance at an exponential rate. Uh, and uh, uh, here's uh, an uh, exciting update from uh, Popular Mechanics. Popular Mechanics, it's a frequent source for great break, uh, breakthroughs, I find. Uh, in, in this, uh, it's a combination of interests of a Nobel Prize physicist and intersecting with biology and our, our psyche. Uh, it's a recent experiment that suggests our consciousness, our sense of of self uh, is a quantum wave process facilitated by microtubules <clears throat> in nerve cells of our brains. Uh, and like every quantum wave, uh, it has the ability of superposition to be in multiple places at the same time. We're kind of doing that right now, aren't we? Uh, and also, uh, there's an entanglement uh, that allows uh, very distant particles 
uh, to join. That's part of the quantum wave process that our brain receives like a television program. And through this, uh, the scientists say, our individual consciousness might connect with the whole a uh, universe so we've had moments like that haven't we well we feel like we're connected to everything and everybody that oceanic experience well scientists are saying well of course and here's the mechanism uh, on how that happens and i'd say uh, that is some hopeful news isn't it uh, before we look at some more examples of uh, uh, hope on the horizon, uh, let's look at what's happening in parts of uh, academia, uh, which quite uh, often feels hopeless to us uh, working in it, uh, especially in re uh, regards to the metaverse and uh, virtual world education. I wouldn't call this news especially hopeful, but uh, there is often opportunity in a crisis, so we hear. I've been meeting with uh, educators and administrators and university officers and program heads and course developers, and I've been giving present, uh, presentations about virtual world learning. Uh, I bring them in uh, quite often using Zoom uh, so they can experience it from their uh, comfort of their Zoom platform without having to sign into Second Life. And it's been working uh, quite well. Oh, thank you for sharing uh, that link on consciousness. There it is right there. Um, my, my most recent presentations typically uh, focus on their main question is, well, what about the headsets? And you can see here, it's a common question. Uh, over all the the metaverse hype that's been happening, somehow we've gotten the impression that the only way to engage a virtual world learning is through a spendy 3D headset. That's a message that may well have been amplified by Meta, Facebook, uh, Apple, Sony, uh, and all the rest. Certainly looking to get a new market uh, in those headsets. But you know, I've been teaching marketing and tech courses since 2000, following these issues closely. We've seen lots of breakthroughs come and go in 3D, 3D uh, theaters, 3D TV, 3D games uh, on the Oculus, and I've tried them all. I've really wanted them to work. I've bought the headsets and the glasses and the custom TVs and the pricey DVDs, uh, but none of it has really clicked, has it? Did they even make uh, 3D movies anymore? We were so sure that that was going to take over. Uh, and now uh, the 3D metaverse is shaking out its offering. Uh, but in the meantime, uh, we have work to do uh, in our own virtual world with uh, educational practices apart from uh, any specific platform uh, or, or dimension. Uh, I've been saying, um, and quite often I think upsetting people, that uh, I think it's a mistake to conflate and con confound what we do in virtual world learning uh, with the metaverse, at least as it's being hyped right now. Uh, if you have a stake in the 3D uh, educational metaverse, I'm sorry uh, for some bad news, but in the short term, uh, it's really uh, not looking good. Already the metaverse is tumbling down uh, in the hype cycle and the stories are coming out, uh, what colleges should do next uh, as this uh, uh, begins to fade away. Uh, once the initial uh, 3D uh, novelty and the headsets begin to age, uh, I think early uh, participants are wondering if it was a smart investment that's certainly being borne out uh, by, the, uh, by some of the news reports, some of the comments. One innovation consultant, he consults with a number of university presidents and vice presidents, and he told me that uh, administrators uh, speak of their twin campuses, that's what they call them, uh, in glittering terms on the record, but then they tell them their regrets about what else they could have bought for those hundreds of thousands of dollars. And, and once the initial funding dries up, 
uh, universities are going to be at a loss for additional funding, especially as their attention turns to uh, other pressing issues such as declining revenues and artificial intelligence. Uh, the administrator uh, linked in this story from inside uh, higher education. There's no paywall on that. Some of these may have a paywall. Uh, but it says, you know, this uh, multiverse technology uh, is inevitable, but it has a long way to go, uh, maybe another 20 or 40 years, he says, because before it becomes widely uh, accessible and affordable and just universal. Uh, you can get this article, very interesting article, uh, through the slide here. Uh, yes, the slides, again, uh, I guess all you need to do is click the little I, the information I, at the bottom of the screen, and it will take you uh, to a PDF uh, of these slides. Uh, uh, these days, uh, when I speak to administrators, and I teach for four different universities, I'm one of those adjuncts uh, that somehow managed to squeeze a living out of it, and I'm speaking with uh, administrators left and right, uh, and these days almost all of them have uh, artificial intelligence uh, as their top issue. Oh, I don't want to add uh, more noise to all that's going on, but I do want to share just three uh, quick impressions uh, that I've had, you know, as, a, as an educator specializing in tech. Uh, as far as admissions go, uh, admissions officers have been wringing their hands and tugging their hair over students using uh, artificial intelligence for their applications and their personal statements. And, and how are the uh, admissions officers to distinguish actual skills? Uh, yet, I just saw this recent report. That says that by 2024, 80% of all admissions offices will be using artificial intelligence on their own to review uh, student applications rather than using human eyes. It's just inevitable. Uh, they say already about 50%. Uh, according to the article linked here, 50% of admissions offices are using artificial intelligence to review uh, student applications and writings. Also, uh, in cheating, uh, as uh, educators are scrambling to catch artificial intelligence, cheating, some of the teachers I know are already uh, using artificial intelligence to design courses. One week, a uh, teacher told how with just three pictures and three prompts uh, to an AI platform, she generated a valid lecture with slides and a reading list and discussion topics and an exam. Uh, I don't know if she was trying to warn us or if she was just bragging. Uh, and then in the workforce, uh, I tried to download the PDF, a 404 error, file not found. Oh, well, that's just awful. Uh, click the little I. I don't know. It's, it's downloading uh, for me uh, when I click the link. Uh, somebody just got it. Okay, you might want to try again. Uh, says it just worked for me, and it worked for Gus, and it worked for Sumo. Uh, if it gives you any trouble, uh, uh, get me at the end of the session here. I'll, I'll uh, email you a direct link about that. Uh, uh, let's see. We were talking about uh, uh, artificial intelligence. Oh, employment. Uh, already uh, there is such workforce demand. Do you remember when the uh, Internet first started? Uh, the companies were waiting in the parking uh, lots outside of uh, uh, community colleges, uh, hiring students right outside their classes. Well, we're seeing simple, uh, something similar now uh, in the workforce. Uh, that if an applicant actually said they were able to cheat their way through a college degree with artificial intelligence, that might actually uh, be a good interview talking point. Uh, but I think what we need to do uh, is keep our human communication skills sharp. Uh, there's a good uh, case study on this, actually, after the Industrial Revolution, uh, when machines were making everything handmade, uh, has become a selling point. Handmade clothing, handmade sweaters, uh, hand-packed milkshakes, you know, the human touch. Uh, maybe someday it's actually going to be a marketing point. We'll pay extra for human brain-made uh, content or uh, a, a movie that uses actual sets and no CGI. That's going to be uh, 
a, a, a plus for us. We're going to pay extra for that. Uh, artificial intelligence also. Well, now it's after everyone. Now we're really beginning to take it seriously. Uh, software publishing, computer design, uh, programs, designing programs now. Uh, professional services such as legal and marketing and banking and accounting. Um, they say the best defense uh, against getting cut uh, is more education. I, uh, I certainly agree with that. And a diversity of skills uh, to navigate the shifts. We should be expanding our skills, not turning them over. Uh, Sis was able to uh, uh, download it. Chrome, yeah. <clears throat> some, uh, some browsers I know are fussier than others. Uh, thank you for following up on that, Sis. Uh, here are a few cheat sheets if you decide you want to join uh, the ranks and uh, turn your life over to artificial intelligence. These are uh, two really good cheat sheets. And these prompts, uh, I just copied those uh, uh, to uh, direct artificial intelligence and just how you want them to go about collecting information, what mindset, what voice you want your uh, AI to use. Some, some useful stuff here. Again, available in the PDF. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, look at uh, just just what is going to be happening uh, in uh, the future, looking ahead to 2040. Uh, we've looked at some of this stuff before, but in the interests of countering our negativity bias, let's go ahead, let's review uh, some uh, of this positive stuff on the horizon. Uh, let's quickly turn to the national intelligence uh, officers who since 1979 have been making uh, predictions 20 years into the future. This is a coalition of government, academic, and private sector uh, and senior experts on a range of regional and, and functional issues. There's a, there's a link on this to this report. Uh, some of it hopeful, some of it not so hopeful. Uh, the pace of uh, technological developments, that is certainly going to increase even faster, ever faster, exponentially in certain fields. Uh, it's going to transform our lives and health and climate change and productivity, uh, while also creating uh, some tensions between the social fault lines that we have, especially along the technological divides, educational divides. We need to find ways to get along better, that's for sure. Uh, there may also be greater international geopolitical rivalries, uh, but also uh, advantages to be found by companies with long-term focus and global REITs. Companies, uh, in a lot of ways, have become the new uh, nations uh, with amb ambassador powers, even. We've seen that happen. Uh, and it's also it's going to be a huge game changer is abundant and cheap energy uh, inexpe inexpensive access to universal information and health care and quality living uh, and uh, we also of course may face threats of privacy intrusions and technological failures and who knows if artificial is going to rise up artificial intelligence and conquer us uh, let's go ahead as, as we look ahead. Let's go ahead. Let's take a look backward a little bit and just see how far uh, we've come. If we look at some of the trends uh, over the last two decades, we're actually uh, doing pretty good, according to uh, an article in charts by uh, Dylan Matthews. Dylan, if you're out there, update this. But uh, what we're actually looking at is just general trends, and they have remained uh, consistent. Uh, for uh, example, look what has happened to extreme poverty in just 35 years. Uh, yes, today we still have one in 10 people uh, living on less than $2 a day, and that's a horrible thing to pass on to the next generation. Yeah. My generation, we inherited three in 10 people uh, living in extreme poverty. I think we've done a pretty good job of that, you older folks here in the room with me. Next generation, you younger ones now, uh, it's your turn. Fix the rest of it, feed the people. And hunger is following, uh, uh, falling around the world. Uh, it's decreased by half uh, in more or large uh, generations. Uh, 
Oh, Philip Youngblood, how good to see you uh, in the room and posting uh, your encouragement the way you do, Philip uh, Youngblood. Well, here is a true, uh, along with Chan and Phil and Jess, these are the true uh, heroes that have kept us on track here in virtual worlds, keeping the spark alive. So much for that. So good to see you here, Phil. Uh, what else has changed uh, over the track of time? Getting better child labor and hazardous work has decreased by 40%. Uh, please, let's keep uh, working on that. And some of the slaughterhouses and the fields where I see young children uh, working, please, let's try to fix that. Uh, also, uh, global life expectancy. Look at the climb there. Uh, increased by uh, six years over a 25 spread. We're now living twice as long uh, as we did just uh, two centuries ago. And boy, doesn't it feel like it. Uh, child deaths uh, have fallen by half over 30 years. Our children are living uh, and getting healthier. People are getting taller around the world. We're shooting up in height. Look at uh, that jump uh, since the Industrial uh, Revolution. Uh, and thank you, uh, Phil. Uh, and also, uh, due to better nutrition and living standards, uh, as we worked less and lived better, uh, also homicide rates uh, have fallen around the world. Uh, stockpiles of uh, global nuclear weapons are declining. More people uh, around the world are living in democratic uh, countries. People are going to school longer, especially uh, in many of the uh, developing nations. Yeah, poverty, uh, poverty is getting a lot worse in the UK. Hopefully, uh, these are just cyclical uh, burps uh, in the system. And as things begin to settle out, we'll see these trends uh, taking place. Uh, people are going to school longer uh, and also continuing education. I teach uh, quite a bit in continuing education. Uh, is going strong. Uh, more uh, access to the Internet. That is rapidly rising all over the world. All these grumpy people that feel left out of the changes, legitimately so. Uh, the cranky people living in the middle or the south. Well, I think if we could just get them... Uh, everybody had high-speed internet and next day delivery of Amazon. I think that might uh, mellow people out a little bit. Uh, also, uh, alternative and renewable energy uh, sources such as wind and solar are now cheaper than gas or oil uh, per megawatt hour. Cheap energy is so crucial uh, to our next phase and thank you for that point, Phil Weirly. And it's so easy. That gets back to my point uh, at the top of this. You missed this, Phil. I'm coming at this from the perspective of a sea captain uh, working at sea and uh, taking people out to sea. Is uh, that if we if we get our head locked in the boat during the middle of a crisis, we lose so much that's happening on the horizon. And as uh, somebody here pointed out, the horizon isn't that far away. It comes up so quickly. If we lose sight of what's coming at us, uh, we lose actually quite a quite a number of opportunities that we might develop. Uh, one of the darkest points, and this may relate to what's going on there in the UK, this is courtesy of The Guardian, a linked article uh, here, is, is uh, this new useless class of people as we're replaced by artificial intelligence. Uh, the, the, this article tells us they're not going to be just unemployed, but unemployable. There's not going to be enough jobs. So what are we going to do with these people? What are we going to do with us? Well, interestingly, this article uh, says uh, that we might spend uh, increasing amounts of time in virtual reality worlds. It gives a plug here to 3D, uh, which may provide us with the excitement and emotional engagement uh, that we could be missing in the real world. Oh, yeah, there are so many sad times here uh, happening, uh, Brioni. 
Uh, it just breaks my heart to watch the news uh, these days. We got to watch it, uh, especially, you know, I was a journalist in Russia for three years uh, and another uh, three years working in Ukraine on economic development, trying to help these people find a new way and just to see it all falling apart. It is heartbreaking the hunger and the death and the destruction of billions and billions of dollars hundreds of billion dollars spent simply on destroying things it's heartbreaking uh, let's get back to some of the good news though uh, here are some interesting perspectives uh, and I want to uh, share a few of those from some good thinkers out there uh, and and one of these is from Fast Company. So if we aren't going to be employed and we aren't going to be defined uh, by our careers, what may be our purpose in life if it's not to work and earn? Uh, you look at uh, the data on people who retire and how quickly they they simply uh, drift away uh, from life and their friends and activities if they don't find something to keep them better. Uh, this piece from Fast Company, it says, Artificial intelligence may actually help set us free uh, with a real potential for humans where we're not defined by our jobs, but we're defined by a newer purpose to prioritize the planet and people uh, over profit. And here's another good thinker with thoughts uh, on that. Also uh, in The Guardian from the UK, lots of good thinking coming out of the UK these days, speaking of the Industrial Revolution. Uh, and this piece says uh, the change may already be underway in disciplines from neuropsychology to economics, that we're coming to recognize that both the natural and the social worlds are uh, as orchestras of interdependence, of survival, uh, as an essentially collaborative and cooperative business. We need to get along with one another. We need to seek a global vision wherein we see our lives and our fate as intimately uh, connected to those of everyone else on the planet. Uh, I don't know if you were here, uh, Phil, but earlier we looked at uh, a report on uh, physics now that's saying through quantum waves and receptors in our brains that we are indeed tied in to the universal all of the quantum. It's a fascinating study, Phil, if you download uh, the links. I'm sorry you missed that little bit. You may have, but uh, there's a link to that article uh, in the slides here. Also, I uh, had cheap, abundant power. Let's just click through some of this quickly. What's what's happening out there uh, in the world? Oh, and thank you, Sis. Also posted a link about quantum mysticism. Yeah, they say uh, if we understand what's happening in the quantum world, we just aren't paying attention. It will really blow our minds. Uh, as it feeds them with quantum waves, maybe if we meditate long enough on it, it'll all make sense. Uh, there are uh, lots of sources out there now for cheap, abundant power, solar, fusion, wind, water, 5G, wireless electricity itself may be beamed around a city. Uh, it's a global game changer for sure. There's some interesting articles on all that uh, in this slide. There again, The Guardian uh, I, I like uh, The Guardian. It uh, does some really good reporting, especially even what's happening here in the United States. We're even going to pluck uh, electricity right out of thin air. Uh, scientists at UMass and Amherst, they developed a thin film of protein and nanowires that create power right out of thin air by sucking up uh, atmospheric uh, humidity. Uh, also, tidal power from the sea. Entire towns in Norway powered with tidal energy. Every day along a coast, the tide comes in, the tide goes out. A massive surge of energy easily tapped with some simple spinning giant propellers. Once we start thinking that way and get our minds out of uh, the fossil fuel mess. Uh, wind energy taking flight. Uh, if you uh, drive to Las Vegas from here in California, driving through the desert, you see mile upon mile uh, of these uh, guys spinning in the wind. Also, uh, here's a prototype of an aircraft we may be uh, see flying come 2040. It's basically, it's a flying wing 
Uh, it's uh, reduced drag and powered with electric fans, uh, more solar power, electric power. There's planes that never need to land at all uh, that are powered with solar power. Uh, seating looks like they're really going to be packing it in, uh, in uh, for the passengers, probably going to be just simply loaded on with forklifts and our pre-seated uh, modules there. Oh, I dread flying these days. Uh, we may not get our backpack, our jet backpacks, but uh, soon we should be able to hail an air taxi. Uh, nice, gentle landings uh, right on our rooftops. Uh, housing uh, is also, I do too, Gus. <laughs> Uh, uh, I've got a pilot's license. The nice thing about getting a pilot's license is it's good forever. I haven't flown in 20 years, but all I got to do is three takeoffs and landings, and I'm good to fly again. Isn't that amazing? Um, housing uh, is really going to benefit from uh, some of the newer and cleaner technologies coming, so, such as these uh uh, cost and energy efficient solar floating homes, a thousand square feet is a good living space. Uh, 12 meters in diameter, four meters high with a roof topped by solar collectors. I want one of these. Also printed homes. Here's Here's a good news for the developing world. Uh, 3D printed homes created right on site using a local clay zero waste product. Uh, several homes can be printed uh, at once uh, using multiple clay, uh, crane uh, printers. Some really hopeful stuff there. Uh, and for those of us who like a life at sea, there are some floating cities that could easily become a reality later uh, in the 20s here, helping to solve problems uh, such as overpopulation and rising sea levels. Uh, construction plans in China here for a prefabricated, self-sufficient uh, self island, zero carbon, energy efficient, producing its own food with vertical farms and fish hatcheries, decentralized yet happy uh, living. Here's a plan for Haiti, a collection of artificial islands uh, called Harvest City. Uh, the center of the floating city dedicated to urban functions, housing, office space, and education, while uh, the outer uh, areas are made of agricultural lands. Doesn't that look promising? Um, medical care, we talked uh, earlier about that, what's happening with uh, CRISPR developments uh, in vaccines. Uh, medical care uh, is going to continue with some amazing breakthroughs, robotic, deep-filled surgery, heart and brain operations, uh, where the doctor may be in Tokyo or New York and, and the patient is in a remote village across the world. Or, uh, our surgeons may be operating pe on people on the moon. Uh, soon from their uh, station on Earth. And robots, robotics are uh, proving perfect for eye surgery. I was just reading an article about uh, workers in Las Vegas and how they're uh, being re replaced with robotics, missing, mixing drinks, uh, room service, even cleaning, uh, another field where robotics is going to be taking over. Uh, and uh, 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 bionic eye implants, boy, I'd like one of these. It can give us super uh, vision powers, complete with Wi-Fi and Bluetooth uh, interactivity. We can uh, zoom in with, with our eyes uh, with an implant. That's supposed to be coming out uh, in the very near future. Uh, and uh, the singularity, Kurzweil singularity, uh, as we build more bridges between our biology and technology, uh, some futurists such as uh, Kurzweil, they're predicting that by the next decade, uh, 2040s, people are going to be able to digitally uh, back up their brains. Uh, it seems that if we can download data from our brains, perhaps we can upload learning as well, uh, uh, an instant course in Russian or uh, physics. Uh, he pr predicts we uh, may even achieve a path to 700-year uh, lifetimes uh, this new generation here of uh, millennials and Gen Zers may be living a long, long time. Uh, we should try to get them off uh, to a good start. Those of us old timers that aren't going to benefit uh, from this. Also, uh, they're predicting uh, experts by 2045, just 20 years 
or so from now that we're going to be able to load our brain content into low-cost avatars, uh, complete with the particulars of our consciousness and personality, where we can even go on uh, learning and having conversations uh, with our uh, descendants. Isn't that a little creepy of a thought? Uh, but on the other hand, you know, down the future is just going to be a given. You mean you guys lived in a time? where you actually died and you couldn't pass your consciousness on to others. What a waste of, of learning and life. Uh, that may well be. Isn't it funny how quickly technology goes from being scary to being uh, indispensable? I was reading that long ago when slide rules first came out. They were forbidden from classrooms that they thought we were going to come up with a new breed of engineers that couldn't even do simple calculations. Slide rules were banned in the classroom. Google that. Uh, it's true. And uh, as we start living forever, the youngest among us, they're going to be able to print out a new skins and and new organs and and customized and no reason uh, we couldn't live forever you're right Simo when calculators came out <laughs> those uh, were also banned in the classroom and there was the big fear uh, when uh, autocorrect came out in word processing programs that we were gonna lose those skills uh, I, I uh, I've been around enough I'm six, just turned 65 and uh, 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 Phil, you old enough there, <laughs> using a slide rule in college. I actually had one once. Uh, it's still floating around somewhere. Uh, quantum computing, lots of stuff happening there. Uh, back to that article where our braves, uh, brains are actually quantum uh, wave receptors. I think there's some fascinating stuff uh, happening here. Yeah, I guess if you've seen one, you get to join our old people's club. <laughs> uh, quantum uh, computing is going to be using transmons and entanglement uh, for subatomic weirdness where we can now perform highly complex calculations in just minutes that used to take eons, 10,000 years to complete a, deck, uh, a, a calculation. Now we can do in minutes. Plus, they look pretty cool, don't they? I, I wouldn't mind having a computer like that in my home. Uh, but, you know, uh, it's the simple things that we also need to keep our eyes on. It's the Danes who invented uh, the life straw that can filter out waterborne diseases such as typhoid and cholera and dysentery and diarrhea that kill uh, as many as 6,000 children a day. And they only cost $3 uh, each. Uh, I have one myself here on this shelf uh, just in case. Uh, and, uh, well, as we begin to wrap up here, I see we're coming up on the top of the hour. What I have been doing out there, we can expect some big changes in education. I've been interacting uh, with a number of uh, university leaders and designers as we try to find ways to expand opportunities for all. Uh, I've been giving presentations on virtual world education uh, to university administrators and department heads and directors and professors and students, international students in particular. I think this is really going to be an asset. And I've been giving these tours through Zoom. Uh, I haven't been doing much outside uh, of my protected zone here, but I've been bringing a lot of people in uh, from the outside, first timers, uh, just giving them a safe uh, look at what we're all about. It's been working uh, very well, these uh, presentations in virtual worlds. Uh, on uh, their uses as an educational platform. Here's some of the people that uh, have been coming in, I quote. Actually, I just made a presentation on this yesterday uh, to the Virtual World Education Consortium, VWEC, <laughs> maybe they call themselves, uh, on some of these comments, and maybe uh, we can share that here uh, at some point. Uh, some of the steps we might take to meet uh, the legitimate concerns and demand of others in academia, uh, especially as we adjust to the multiverse and try to find our way within that. I advise that we try to separate ourselves right now from what's happening in mu the multiverse and the negative uh, publicity uh, that it's been receiving as, as some outside forces trying to trying to grab it to themselves. Good sign, I think, if people are trying to make money off of it, we must have value here.
uh, slides uh, to that presentation actually uh, from yesterday. What's happening in the multiverse? What we need to do uh, to meet some of the comments of these people? Those slides are posted. In fact, uh, if I still have just a couple of seconds, let me share uh, those slides uh, from yesterday. Uh, it really applies to what we're talking. Uh, it's it's specifically focused on uh, education. And it was called uh, University's Response uh, to Virtual World Learning. Let me do a quick copy here. I always fumble this when people are waiting on me, but actually this time it seems to work. There is, uh, yeah, WEC Educary 2023. Uh, just what uh, some uh, uh, leaders in academia have to say about our efforts. Unfortunately, our efforts here going for 20 uh, years, some 20 years here uh, in virtual worlds is now being usurped by this flash in the pan uh, universe pitch. Uh, multiverse pitch trying to get people to buy these glasses and uh, unfortunately we were, we're being tarnished by some of that as the negative reports come out uh, and uh, my presentation yesterday the slides from those uh, provide some some thoughts on that uh, here is uh, some contact information for me uh, if you'd like to take a look at my research website there it is on transculturalism uh, in education Made a made two uh, mistakes, wild garden, and uh, very poor content. You're right about that. They should have learned. I've got some interesting uh, quotes from a university professor on this very uh, same topic. That boy, are we still a long way, twenty uh, to forty years away from this actually being practical. Yet, nonetheless, there are some suggestions there, cheap suggestions that we might do. When I talk with administrators and I tell them that my nonprofit. Uh, 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 Educari uh, Island here is only $100 a month. They blanch when they uh, consider the 200, 300,000 that they just spent on a twin campus uh, in the Metaverse. But uh, we saw that here in Second Life, didn't we? All these great campuses uh, built that uh, became ghost towns after the initial fascination wore off. Well, that's what we're seeing right now uh, in the multiverse. Uh, thank you so much, says, says I appreciate you. Uh, you know, in the 1980s, those of us that remember back to Farm Aid, what a great thing that was, that Farm Aid concert. Um, Queen uh, performed. Oh, what a great concert that was. Uh, and there was a slogan, uh, and it said, now that we can, we must. I love that slogan. Now that we can, we must. Uh, let's try to make it a little less preachy, perhaps, and say, now that we're able, we shall. And I really do believe that, providing that we change our ways and our hearts and what I see coming up in the young people uh, and so many people trying to make things better, I can't help but uh, be hopeful about that. However, you know, changing uh, our ways uh, is a pretty big provision uh, without much evidence to give us confidence in it that we are going to change our ways. Albert Einstein said that it's easier to split the atom than to purify uh, the human heart, but we still keep working at it. Unfortunately, we've come to expect incompetence, uh, so our hopefulness uh, has to come from somewhere else. The grandstanders, the politicians, the news media uh, aren't likely to be the solution. In fact, quite often they're the problem uh, itself, or at least exacerbating the problem. Uh, and there's this avarice uh, in that 30% that we talked about uh, earlier that is ultimately consuming uh, ourselves along with the planet, which is ironic, uh, really. Why are we consuming ourselves when we have such abundance? <sighs> one, uh, w one of the points uh, that should be clear from, uh, from some of what we looked at today, there should be plenty of stuff for everyone to live well, cheap energy, comfortable housing, open uh, education, safe water, nutritious food, 3D printing of our most uh, everyday necessities. Uh, and the problem is always is how are we going to distribute uh, this abundance? What systems are we going to turn to? Uh, one advantage of being an educator is you get to see this next batch of minds and hearts coming up. The teachers in this room, you know uh, this is true. It's, it's so 
comforting to see so many bright and well-intentioned students rising to the time with so many ideas on how to make things better. It reminds me of our hippie heydays in the 70s. Any hippies in the room? You just had a feeling that there was profound change in the air. And that's the hope that I hope we're sharing uh, with one another. And I thank you for sharing some of your day with me. That brings us right up to the minute of the hour. Uh, and uh, I thank you. <laughs>